Okay, so uh, as we previously said, we had uh, mentioned Tom Cruise and we were saying there was more Tom Cruise stuff to come. Uh, well, apparently Mission Impossible 7 has returned to Italy. They were currently filming in Italy back in February uh, when the coronavirus pandemic was really, really bad and they had to completely cease filming. They had to stop filming altogether. Well, now uh, the Mission Impossible 7 uh, franchise or uh, set or production crew, they have returned to Italy to uh, continue filming their film. And um, I want to play a little video clip here. Um, they, this, is, uh, this comes from the Associated Press. Uh, I think they put this out yesterday. Maybe it was today. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, but it is a uh, live video, a oh, live video it is actual video of Tom Cruise on set of whatever it is they're filming. So let's go ahead and talk about it. And, uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see what everybody thinks. All right. So here you can see Tom Cruise kind of, you know, I think he pulled uh, somebody off of a car. He's crawling across the car, opens a car door. And who does he pull out but Haley Atwell? There's uh, Haley Atwell there coming out of the car. Oh, and there's Todd. <laughs> He's still spry. He just sprung over right? to go to that car like it was nothing. There you can get a, a great shot of Haley Atwell. You know, police coming down. Uh, again, I don't know if this is security for the film set or if it's, you know, actually part of the movie. Tom Cruise waving at people. As he does. <laughs> dun, 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 Tom Cruise ambassador. Yeah, so, so it's just a lot of scenes and shots of them, you know, kind of like rehearsing this scene, getting various camera angles. They kind of have to keep, it looks like they have to kind of keep doing this uh, same uh, bit over and over and over again uh, so that they can, you know, um, get the shots that they need. You know, Tom Cruise is always such a daredevil with his with his stunts. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me uh, at all if, if it was one of those things where he, he's like, okay, wh where is the virus <laughs> exploding right now? Where is the hot stuff? Right. We're going to go film there. Um, the virus to kill uh, everyone oh, in the world. Man. Mission Impossible all back. You know, I argue that Mission Impossible 2, while not a good Mission Impossible film, it was a fun action movie. It's kind of in this, I mean, it was directed by John Woo. Um, it, uh, you know, John Woo also doing what you uh, previously mentioned, Con Air. Um, Face Off. Like, he's a fun, high action, high octane kind of filmmaker. And that's exactly what Mission Impossible 2 was. It's not, it's a really bad Mission Impossible film. But it's just a really fun, high action, high octane this is completely ridiculous. I actually, I actually will defend Mission Impossible Two um, from a lot of the naysayers. First of all, where do you fall in Mission Impossible Two? And two, um, like, what are your knee-jerk reactions of this uh, Associated Press um, stuff? So I, I was working in in my teenage movie theater uh, when the first Mission Impossible came out. Saw it at least. 15 times uh, when it came out uh, were disappointed that the the, uh, the Peter Graves character from the original yeah I didn't like that as yeah Impossible Seven. Uh, um, I mean, if they're if they're, <laughs> they're going to follow the uh, parachute jump, came very close. Yeah. I mean, that was just insane. Mission Impossible the franchise. I I love Tandy in it. I think she she yep. uh, d does a phenomenal job. Uh, I like the bad guy. Uh, is you know, like. Uh, 
what what they did with Michael Bean in in James Bond, uh, where he you know he's a former ally um, and colleague. Um, I thought that that was a neat premise. Uh, the action was was certainly fun to watch, but the one glaring thing that I can't not notice is the way the motorcycle tires keep changing from, from on road to off road tires in that movie. I find it so distracting. <laughs> That's that's the thing that you find distracting of that film. I yeah I I can I, <laughs> it, it, it's it's picayune to some people probably to most but for me uh, I and not like I'm a, a huge motocross guy or or uh, I don't even ride a motorcycle never have mm. in my life but I, when when I I know the difference between a, a, a street tire and an off-road tire and when i see that it's just so glaring that i can't look away and it pulls me right out that's incredible i love that i love that so much um it's i mean it's it's my father was a uh, a firearms collector when i was uh young uh and growing up he just he just loved he loved guns so he collected them uh and whenever we'd watch a movie where people bang 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 shoot them up he'd say oh no, no no that's that's not how that model works and i'm like how did how, like why would you know that like, who cares? It, it's it's a gun. Shoot the bad guy. And, uh, but now in like my adult life, whenever I see uh, movies that uh, or scenes in a movie that take place on an airplane, I always pick it apart. I'm like, oh, those aisles are way too wide. You would never have an aisle that wide on on that particular <laughs> style of aircraft. Or, uh, oh, the procedure for uh, uh, getting into the flight deck. Oh, that's not. No, 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 no. That's not correct. That's not how that works. That's not how that goes down. Yeah. Anyway, like, but yeah, like I pick apart like those kinds of things as well. The jump seat in the cockpit looks not nothing like that. It's a completely Having different. Having a galley fabric. that big on an airplane that would be a dream. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Come on, you could break dance in that galley. You can't break dance on a seven thirty seven galley. What are you talking about? Yeah. So yeah, it's I mean it's the same thing, but um. I'm excited that, first of all, I'm excited that Mission Impossible is back filming again. But it also raises some questions, as we had previously talked about, and is kind of a theme of the show, I guess, today. With no movie theaters opening, and with no movie theaters showing new movies, and with the potential of movie theaters shutting down, am I going to have to watch Mission Impossible 7 on my television at home? This is... This is, I mean, it's, I, I love hearing, hey, production for Jurassic World has started back up again. Hey, production for The Batman has started back up again. Hey, production for Mission Impossible 7 and 8 have started back up again. Great. Awesome. I'm really excited about that. But I'm also a little worried. I mean, I get it. It, yeah. Mm-hmm. All the movie theaters that we have in New York City like if you want to go to a decent theater it's either AMC or it's Regal there's a few there's a there's a few Cinemarks um there in Brooklyn I know there's a um uh an Alamo Draft House um there's a few kind of more indie movie theaters around but for the most part if you want to go to like a main movie theater it's AMC or it's Regal and if we yeah. don't I mean, we 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 have uh, I think Cinemark is probably one of the okay. bigger ones in Connecticut. So, uh, you know, but it, I I don't want to hear from anybody that they have to drive uh, you know an hour or two to to get to a decent theater. I I mean I I remember when uh, the Dark Knight uh, came out and uh, like designed. It's an amazingly immersive experience. You have to do it. Yeah. And at the time, there were there were no IMAX theaters uh, for me to be had less than two hours away. And it makes all the difference in the world. It like it it's it's the experience. It's the opportunity. It's the I don't know how else to say it. It's the experience. There's no replacing that experience. Um, I can't remember what my first IMAX movie was. I remember going to to like the Dome IMAX Science Center, like um, the Carnegie Science Center in Pittsburgh. It was like a school field trip. We all went down and uh, we had to watch. Like, and if you've ever been in one of those huge Dome IMAX theaters, 
as a child, it is ridiculously intimidating. When you're walking down the aisle to get to your seat, you feel like you're going to fall forward because the whole thing is on like a oh, vertical yeah, slant. Steep. <laughs> yeah, super, super steep. steep. Yeah. So you feel you like you're gonna fall over, so you're terrified of that. But then I remember sitting in the seats. It was like a 30 minute movie about beavers, like creating a beaver dam, and it was the most breathtaking experience I had ever had, like in in the in the theater. And that was that before Jurassic Park. I want to say it was. What grade oh, were you in? Man, I want to say fourth grade. So that's what, like, ten years old. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that would have been that would yeah. have been pre Jurassic Park. Um, I think it was pre anyway, but like, it was crazy. It was awesome. It was immersive. It was beautiful, and I had never experienced anything quite like that before. But yeah, the opportunity to have those experiences they're kind of dwindling, and I'm I love the Mission Impossible franchise. I love it, and like you said, um, when we saw the first one directed by Brian De Palma back in 1996. That, like, to me, that was the summer blockbuster movie. That was the movie to go see that summer. And it blew my mind. I used to watch the original television show, like, the old reruns. We used to watch Mission Impossible 88, uh, again, with Peter Graves. Not great. Not as good as the original series, but, you know, it was still fun. Um, And, yeah, I, like, I, I ate that movie up. Mission Impossible 2? And I just, I, hmm. you know, I just thought of something uh, that kind of ties us all together. I think one of my first IMAX experiences was at the, the Boston Science Center, um, where they had an IMAX theater, and it was Leonard Nimoy, who was also in the original Mission <gasps> Impossible series, uh, narrating. I think it was a Grand Canyon uh, panoramic experience, where it feels wow. like you're flying through the Grand Canyon. What a like. What a special thing, too. Like, truly, genuinely, what a special thing. Because, like, uh, I, I, don't, I don't, like, I assume schools still go to, like, blah, blah, blah science centers. And they still go to see, like, these IMAX movies and whatever. But I don't know if they actually do. But as a kid, that was such a special thing. Like, to have that field trip opportunity and to be with all of your friends and all of your classmates. And you go watch these 30-minute silly movies at the time... It was truly special. I think a lot of the speciality has worn off because we have like regular things like IMAX theaters. We have regular things like the Dolby Atmos theater. Um, we even have in-home theaters. Internet is not dial-up anymore. You know, like when you and I were in, uh, oh, thank God. <laughs> when we were in middle school, having to use dial-up internet that was like. I can. I still remember the sound of it. Like we all remember that sound, right? And, yeah, and I I remember when, when the first time I heard a fifty six k baud modem, just how drastically different that sounded connecting than, than any of the ones prior. Man, man, like how times have changed and how youth has changed. And the movie going experience, and I get it. You and I were we're we're in like that mid range, uh, uh, like demographic where Disney doesn't necessarily care about us as much. Like for the Marvel, for the comic book stuff. Okay, yeah, sure, maybe like we're we're a big uh, draw, or like the stuff that they put out is a draw to us. Um, but I, I get it. They're worried more about, like, the younger demographic. Uh, one of our guests on the show, um, Katie Hammond, uh, pointed out to me the other day that um, with James Bond, No Time to Die, I hate, I hate the Billie Eilish song. I hate it. I think it's absolutely terrible. But it's also not marketed to me because I'm going to go see the movie. The people who make James Bond movies know my demographic is already going to go see it because you know why? James Bond. So they need a younger draw. They need something to pull people out. And hence, Billie Eilish. Um, which, I mean, from a marketing perspective is genius. I think it's terrible. Right. I don't like it. But hey, it's not for me. I get it. I understand that. Um, where was I going with this? <laughs> I was making a point. I was building my argument, and it. Comp- 
the times they are a change in Disney doesn't our money still spends, but they're, they're not targeting stuff that our demographic anymore. It's true. It's true. Anyway, Mission Impossible, like we got way off topic. Mission Impossible 7, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to be able to see it. I hope, I hope, I hope it's going to be in a theater. Um, Todd, uh, final thoughts? Uh, yeah, got to do it in a theater. Got to be a summertime blockbuster. Um, even if it pushes it out to, you know, 2022, 2023. Um, do the the movie justice and let it be seen the way the filmmakers wanted it to be seen on the screen that they made it for. I agree on a screen that they made it for, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think about mission impossible seven? Um, first of all, do you think it's smart for them to continue, uh, filming the way that they are filming? Um, I mean, they're currently filming in, in, uh, Italy where, you know, the pandemic was some of the worst, uh, in the early stages. Um, also, uh, are you looking forward to it? How do you think you are going to be able to see this movie? Jump down to the comment section below and let me know your thoughts. All right, guys, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click like. If you really like this video, click subscribe. And if you really, really like this video, click share. Because that is exactly what Batman from the animated series would want you to do. His name is Batman.